Hi, everyone. Um, we will get underway with the uh, Vision Zero uh, committee meeting today. Uh, we'll start with elections of the chair. Are there, are there uh, any nominations for chair? I'd like to nominate uh, Councillor Martin. Okay, Councillor Martin, do you accept the nomination? I guess. Okay, are there any other nominations for chair? I'll so, nominate John Utley. <laughs> Councillor Utley, do you accept? <laughs> Sorry, Councillor Utley, do you accept the nomination? I don't know if that was just a. Uh, yes. Okay, so we will need to do a vote then uh, for uh, the chair. Um, so uh, all of those in favor uh, for Councillor Martin as chair? Of, did you say Councillor Martin? Yes, for Councillor Martin as chair. Okay, uh, all those in favor for Councillor Utley as chair? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Councillor Carpenter, you were opposed to both. Okay. I'll nominate Councillor Carpenter. Okay, Councillor Carpenter, do you accept the nomination? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Uh, would anyone like to chair for this meeting? Uh, and then we can conduct a formal election at the next meeting, perhaps when we have more members, we do need a chair to commence the meeting. So it would uh, just be a chair uh, for uh, this well, meeting. I didn't, I didn't vote, so I'll vote for Councillor Utley, thank you. Okay. So Councillor Utley, uh, your chair for for the for the committee. Are with, there any... uh, with that overwhelming support, why I can't say no, can I? <laughs> Thank you, Councillors. Uh, so uh, I'll bring the. Uh, we just need to, to do order. a. a quick... Do we need a vice? Uh, I don't think we need a vice for this meeting. We don't uh, need it for the meeting, but we will need to do an election for vice chair, just in case you had to declare yeah, conflict on yeah, something. Yeah, so yeah, and I think that's fair to. To, um, to get more members uh, on the vote next time. Okay, so so sorry, just just for my clarification, you you're just chairing for this meeting, or you you're like you'd like to? Well, I'll, I'll chair for this meeting, and if it's the will of the members at the next meeting uh, for me to stay in chair, I, I'm okay with that. And if they want to change to somebody else, I'm okay with that as well. So, but I'll be very pleased to uh, uh, chair this meeting. Okay, we, we can uh, we can definitely have the uh, formal elections again at the next meeting. Councilor Carpenter. Yes, I nominate Councilor Martin for vice chair. For for the meeting, okay, Councilor Martin, do you? Accept? No, no, I'm I'm trying to follow the agenda. I don't know how we can change the agenda, like so, uh, like is being suggested here. Uh, the members here have to vote, so I'm voting for Councilor Martin for vice chair. Okay, do you accept the nomination, Councilor Martin? I do, and I'd like to at this time uh, mention that Councillor Vanderstel sent give me his regrets because I had been chair. Uh, he had a death in his extended family, so that's why he's not attending. Okay. Um, okay. So again, just so for my understanding, the not the election of Councillor Atlee as chair, and the election of Councillor Martin as vice chair are it's permanent. That's permanent. We do not need to have a vote the next meeting, or Councillor Atlee, you would like the chair to be voted on the next meeting. I think we need to go through the process again, uh, assuming that we get um, all the members of the committee uh, uh, in attendance. Okay, if that's, that's okay with everyone. I I think I you know I, we've got like thirty percent, thirty three percent of our members, uh, council members, not in attendance. So I I, I think we need to um, uh, take that into consideration. And, okay. and if that's okay with everyone, um, you know we can get through the agenda today. Uh, Councillor Comedy, you had your hand up. Did you want to add anything? We could just adjourn the meeting and not have the meeting. I could just step out. We could cancel the meeting and have it again if that's what we need to. Um, I, I, I'm okay continuing. Uh, um, there, there are no... Uh, the only decisions on the items on our agenda uh, are to receive the uh, materials. Uh, we could uh, all receive the reports and and um, uh, we could, if we wanted to defer um, 
uh, any items that we want more discussion on until we've got a full complement. Or as you've suggested, we can, um, uh, we can, um, you could step out if you wanted to, then we don't have quorum and then uh, we'd have to wait the obligatory 15 minutes uh, until we do get quorum or not. And then, um, so, you know, but I guess, um, uh, what, what, what's, would you rather continue or would you rather um, postpone? Uh, Councillor Martin. The, the three reports are to be received. It's not like there's any major decision being made here. Uh, people who aren't in attendance would have got the uh, information. Uh, they're just not here to hear firsthand or, or have their questions answered. So if anybody has questions on these items, they can bring them up to the next meeting, but there's no reason why we can't proceed and receive these items. I just have a concern. I have a concern with the process when we can say we can't vote on chair or vice chair, but we can vote on other items, even if it is to receive. You know what? There's three of us here. The decision should have all been made here today. Um, and if you're not, then we defer the whole meeting. If we're going to defer some of the meeting because we want somebody else that may want chair or vice chair, if that's the issue, and this is not the proper process. So, I, how do we change? The agenda says election of chair election of vice chair, uh, if we're changing the agenda, that needs 24 hours notice and we have to post it for the public. We've got some standards that we have to set by by. That's my concern. So if we're gonna postpone the election of chair and vice chair and it's only temporary, then I suggest we post postpone the whole meeting by just not being having enough in the court. I, I know it sounds difficult. I just, you can't be, you know, you can't be a little bit wrong here. Um. That being said, I'm quite willing to take over as uh, chair on a permanent basis. Thank you. Councilor Moran, anything to offer? No, I'm good. Okay. So now we've got that part out of the way. Uh, thank you. Um, but I, I do uh, suggest uh, very highly that we do elect a um, Vice Chair at um, at our next meeting with a full compliment, um, unless somebody's willing to take that on right now. I thought Councilor Martin accepted that. Oh, did he? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Alrighty, so we're all set with uh, Chair and Vice Chair. Thank you both very much. Uh, any declarations of conflicts of interest? None. Uh, any presentations and delegations? I don't believe there are any. Madam Clerk. Sorry, there are no uh, delegations or presentations today. Okay, and I assume that you've taken uh, roll call. The roll's been taken. Okay, so we've got three items for consideration. 5.1 Vision Zero Initiatives uh, Update, 5.2 Automated Speed Enforcement Update, and 5.3 on street parking amendment Buchanan uh, Crescent. Are there any of those three items that you want separated? I don't hear anything. I, I would like to separate 5.2. I'm uh, sorry. 5.3, Mr. Chair, sorry. 5.3, okay. Um, so, uh, Madam Clerk, could you call a vote on the uh, remaining uh, item 5.1, please? Yeah, sorry, can I just get the mover and seconder for item 5.1? Okay, moved by uh, Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Carpenter. Any discussion? Can you take the vote, please? Yep. All those in favor of item 5.1 as recommended that the report be received. Okay, those opposed? Okay, and the item is carried. Thank you, Melanie. Uh, 5.2, um, could we get a staff member to give us an overview on this? I, 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 I think this is something that's um, certainly important to all of us and something we've been talking about for a long time. So if we could just get uh, an overview on this for the viewing public, that would be appreciated. Through the chair, uh, Mark Jackson, Director of Operational Services. I'm actually going to pass it over to Dave Ferguson, our manager of traffic, 
uh, services, and he's going to give a brief overview of this uh, report for us. Thank you, Mark. Good afternoon. Uh, through Hi, the David. chair. Hello. Uh, through the chair. So uh, at the Vision Zero uh, committee meeting of August 25th, uh, staff were directed to report back to committee with further analysis of the costs of the ASE program. ASE operates in a similar manner to that of red light camera operations. Uh, ASE requires extensive studies to be completed, uh, develop ranking of location for ASC consideration, ongoing monitoring and reporting to the ministry. Uh, and overall, the program has a bigger impact on staffing resources compared to red light cameras. The City of Toronto, uh, JPC, processes all violations. However, with the current COVID restrictions and limited resources, the JPC is currently not accepting any additional municipalities. <clears throat> Uh, currently, ASE operations, um, as it relates to uh, court processing, um, is through the provincial court system. Uh, a court system is currently experiencing uh, operational constraints, and the addition of a program such as ASD cannot be accommodated. As a result of constraints on court systems, the Ministry of Transportation is currently exploring moving all automated enforcement programs into the administrative municipal penalty system, also known as AMPS. Uh, regulations are expected to be changed in 2022 to accommodate this. However, it is subject to uh, provincial approvals. AMPS is a municipal operated program and does not impact the provincial court system. Instead, the program is operated by the municipality and um, is designate, has designated hearing and resolution officers who make rulings uh, related to disputes. Um, and the most common type of AMPS program that uh, you might be aware of uh, in other municipalities is their parking programs. That's where the uh, majority of municipalities have currently have AMPS. Uh, the City of Brantford does not currently operate an AMPS program. Legal and real estate services will be exploring the needs to establish uh, such a program for consideration of future operations in Brantford. As previously outlined, ASE has a significant staff resource implication, and any future implementation of a program would require additional technical and administra administrative staff. Uh, these needs would be brought forward in a future report. For the purpose of this uh, report and exercise, um, staff utilized an estimated number of 10,000 violations per year at an average cost of $100 per violation. Overall, there's a potential revenue related to automated enforcement uh, reserve uh, for roadway safety initiatives, uh, just almost uh, $300,000. Staff plan to report back to committee in Q3 or Q4 of 2022 with further information and recommendations. Thank you, David. Uh, Councillor Carpenter. Uh, thank you, Mr. Fair. And, and David, thank you for a, a very detailed explanation. So on, uh, the only question I have left is on the AMPS program, if we decide to operate the AMPS program, even under our own parking uh, rules, regulations. Uh, are we able to put our costs for the employees? At, are we able to take that out of that revenue that's generated? Is that how they're funded? Through you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. So one of the things that's not identified in this report is any uh, costs uh, associated with an AMPS startup. So that would be something that we'd have to look at. What are those costs? And uh, you know, I would say potentially, yes, the, the costs associated would be covered through any revenue that is generated. It'd be interesting to know that because we that, that you said some of them run parking violations uh, out of it as well. It'd be interesting to see if we could uh, have that run by our municipality or the AMPS program and generate revenue from it as well. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The the estimated uh, hundred dollar cost per violation is that with us processing it ourselves through an AMPS program or through the current situation where everything goes through Toronto. Through you, Mr. Chair. So that uh, is based on my experience of uh, operation of uh, ASE program. Um, and that was the general violation cost still being operated through the JPC in Toronto. 
Okay, so if, if we set up our own amps, then the cost per violation goes down, but we have the cost for the amps to administer. Is that correct? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so the, the amps and the fine structure still needs to be developed. That'd be developed by the province. Um, obviously, municipalities would be able to uh, feed that information into the program for consideration. Uh, it would be expected that the cost amounts related to speeding violations would be similar to what it currently is under the law. Okay, and of that uh, $100 cost per violation, how much of that is the processing cost to the, the operation in Toronto? Uh, through the chair, so I don't have it broken down specifically uh, based on uh, an individual violation, but um, looking at it over a course of a year. So it's proposed that uh, the municipality may collect uh, approximately $1 million in violation funds. Of that cost, um, approximately 50,000 would go towards the vendor cost. So that's the use of the ASE cameras. Um, MTO and uh, joint processing costs would just be about uh, $410,000. And then there's a uh, municipal cost associated around $241,000. And then that of course leaves us with uh, a revenue of $290,000. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, David, thank you for a presentation. Um, our, um, uh, is this in the budget now or does it need to go to estimates? Through the chair, it is not currently identified in the budget. Uh, what we are proposing is that Pending uh, approval by the province to move these programs into AMPS, um, which is where we really need it to be able to operate here in Brantford, uh, we would probably be looking at a, a possibly a 2023 operation. So it would okay. be something that would come forward in the future. Uh, and um, how many cameras? I think there's a minimum number, isn't there, of cameras that uh, we have to have? Through the chair, this is this is based on uh, this estimate is based on two mobile cameras. Two, okay. And when we say mobile, um, does that mean we can put them? Um, we can move them around um, wherever we want, or must they be at specific locations within the city? through the chair so they would be placed they'd be placed at a location for approximately one month and then yep. would be relocated to a new location there is a process the municipalities must follow there's guidelines that have been provided by the province to uh, identify locations uh, there is a testing requirement and there is a, an audit uh, follow-up that does take place that the municipality must must uh, report on. Uh, so the locations are sort of, we can't just identify some location. We have to go through a process. Okay. I hope you don't have my address. <laughs> Sorry. Mr. Hutchings. Just uh, very quickly, Mr. Chair, if I can. I know David's, and, we're, and I want to say that we're very fortunate to have David come over and lots of experience in this area. We're focused on one side of this, uh, and this kind of the enforcement and the and the and the amps and that sort of stuff. We will also need another report come forth from Kim Jolie. I see she's on, as well as from the court side, Mr. Chair. I just want to let you know we're focusing kind of the catching and you know and doing that sort of stuff, but also then and prosecuting and going through that. And it'll it'll add a lot of pressure on to Kim and the POA. So I know this committee is only focused on one side. The council should be aware there will be another side of this uh, of this contra side to this as well. I want to make sure you're aware of that as well. So Kim, I'm not sure if you have anything to add, but I just want to jump in and make sure you were you were you were uh, you were recognized as well as part of this process too. Thank you, Brian. Um, Melanie, I've, has this been moved and seconded? No, so we will need a mover and seconder to put the item on the floor. Thank you. Can I get a mover and a second? Please? Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Martin and Councillor Carpenter. Uh, discussion. Uh, Kim, did you want to say something? I saw your name pop up there. 
Thanks, Councillor Otley. I just wanted to, to say thank you to Brian for bringing that forward. And yes, the intention is for legal and real estate services to analyze how best to use AMPS, either in its current format um, to try and alleviate some of the pressure from the court system or going forward as the legislation is amended, as Dave mentioned, David mentioned, pardon me, um, to allow for us to prosecute both red light cameras and ASD offenses uh, in, in, or not prosecute, but um, have a dispute resolution process engaged in that way. So that's the intention at this point in time. And we will bring the report forward as we gather more information and know a little bit more about what the province intends with its legislative changes that are coming, hopefully. That's great. Thank you, Kim. Councillor Carpenter. Yeah, Kim. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, AST is that is that all traffic? What, what what does that mean exactly? AST is automated speed enforcement. So, okay. yeah, it's the uh, the camera system that allows for these sorts of offenses to happen in an automated basis in an automated manner. And we are currently prosecuting for uh, traffic line or speeding or sorry parking tickets. Parking That's correct. Tickets. We're still doing that currently as part of the provincial offense or our municipal offenses, which is part of the old city hall right still, right? Am I, am I correct in that? That's correct, yes. Okay, so if the province downloads some of these responsibilities, uh, you know, uh, the other thought might be that we look at the other side of the old city hall might be where we can move all the provincial offenses office to and have courthouses all in one location. Just a thought, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, the uh, uh, comments that I have for this is, uh, while two of these mobile units moved around every month, uh, it could take the place of a number of, of um, police officers or traffic enforcement. And I, 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 I think this will be a good payback um, when we eventually get the, um, get the um, final report and recommendation. Assuming that we can fund it, I, am, I, I would hope that will come pretty close to um, breaking even or even making a, pro a little small profit on this so we can buy uh, possibly buy more uh, mobile units. Uh, so if there are no other comments or questions, uh, and Melanie, could you take call a vote, please? All those in favor of item 5.2 as recommended to be received. Okay, those opposed? And the item is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, the next item is uh, 5.3, Councillor Carpenter. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and, and thanks for the report. Uh, I think Eric did the report, but uh, uh, is the process now that, because since we passed the regulation that uh, we are going to do this on all streets in the city, that all those streets for recommendation for parking changes, would they all come to this committee then, as this has? Through the chair, it's it's not that every single, so we have a policy, obviously, we typically follow the policy. Uh, the only difference here on Buchanan is that uh, once a survey is issued um, and there wasn't support, and there wasn't a safety issue identified uh, that we did have to bring a report back. And all those reports that result in that, that answer will come to this committee? Correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions? I've lost, uh, oh, there, there's Councillor Martin. Uh, I lost you on the top of the screen there. So uh, if there are no other questions uh, or comments, uh, um, would you please call a vote? We'll just need a mover and seconder for this item as well. Sorry to the chair. Uh, Councillor Carpenter, oh, okay. Councillor Carpenter and Councillor Martin, okay. Did you get everyone, oh, Melanie? Yeah, so all those in favor of item 5.3? Those opposed? The item is carried. Thank you. Uh, we have one uh, concept uh, items, um, uh, 6.1 uh, our August 25 um, meeting minutes. Can I get uh, a mover and seconder? Councillor Carpenter, seconded by, I can't see your hand, hand uh, Councillor Martin, but I'll assume you put your hand up. Uh, would you call the vote, please, uh, Melanie? All those in favor of the minutes of August 25th, 2021? Those opposed? The minutes are approved. 
Thank you. Uh, there are no resolutions, no notices of motion. And with that, um, I'd like to um, adjourn the meeting. Have a good evening, everyone. Thanks, good night.